Grand Rising to the Collective. Y'all know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up. If you new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop them uploads. Y'all know we coming with about four videos a week, man. And this is for entertainment purposes as well. When you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, helps Collective grow, helps Collective get bigger, helps more people who like this type of content. Tap in with this content, but Collective, Man, y'all don't even know. I appreciate y'all. If times is tough right now, you going through it, bro. Mentally, whatever the case is. But you, it's always going to be some good. It's always going to be some bad. But you got this. God ain't going to give you what you can't handle. Trust me. You built for this. Man, believe it. Trust it. Get through it. Because I be having times, too, where I'm like, bro, today is a mess. It's like, instead of speaking it, I had to reassess. But, I, I, hey, I feel y'all. I be going through it, too. Just because y'all get a good video don't mean the rest of the day didn't get kind of tough for me. So, or I'm trying to hold stuff in just to keep the collective together, you feel me? So, yeah, shout out to y'all, but y'all bigger than y'all circumstance. Y'all got this. Y'all get through it. I hope y'all having a smooth seven. But I ain't gonna hold you. We about to get straight to the video, man. Let's go. Uh, beg your finest party. Y'all heard about Project 2025? Have y'all been keeping y'all into the streets? Roll the footage, roll the footage. Project 2025 is a far-right manifesto. It is a 1,000-page bucket list of extremist policies that would uproot every government agency and disrupt the lives of every person who calls this country home. The Department of Education would be eliminated, cutting students off from civil rights protections and ending essential Title I funding for K-12 through schools. Every child has a right to an education, God damn it, and I'm standing on it. Like, I don't think, I don't think y'all really understand what's going on here. They really trying to cut funding for schools, K through 12 schools. Like, do y'all not understand Title I funding? Do y'all not know how many kids are going to be affected by that? Now, understand these are policies and priorities for the next conservative president. The mandate outlines policy priorities for the next conservative president. Is that correct? It does. You've done a great job. I just want to let you know. Y'all gotta listen. Y'all gotta understand what's going on here. They are trying to eliminate the entire Department of Education. The whole thing gone. It calls for eliminating the Department of Education, eliminating the Department of Commerce. Project 2025 recommends abolishing the Department of Education, whose programs would either be transferred to other government agencies or terminated. Scientific research would receive federal funding only if it suits conservative principles. Now, when I was trying to stress to y'all how bad it was, with y'all kids not knowing shades, y'all was calling people trying to have me terminated. Now they trying to terminate the whole Department of Education. Are y'all calling them? Y'all calling up there? I just want to know. Y'all calling up there? I just want to know. Y'all, we got to do better by our kids. We have to do better by our kids because they're not trying to do better by our kids. They don't give a fuck about our kids. The link is in the bio. Summer intensive curriculum coming out for third through eighth grade next week. I'm telling you, y'all, we have to do better by our kids because they do not give a about our kids. I'm telling you, they trying to cut out the whole Department of Education. Don't get how these kids gonna learn. Who gonna teach them? Hey, real quick. <clears throat> hey, real quick. Do we really think that they care about our kids if we seen what happens to other people? I mean, Hawaii? I told you about the kids and we, some of y'all already said y'all seen, y'all had went through the rabbit hole of the kids that in that Buckingham Palace. I think they was orphans in Canada. And Queen Elizabeth had them at the Buckingham Palace, and we ain't seen them kids yet. We hear about the record numbers being set behind, so why would we think that they care about their education? I'm just saying, like, but we have to care about their well-being and education for entertainment purposes, though. So that's, that's my two cents on that. How y'all feel? We gotta do something, though. But this ain't something that's new. I've been remembering something like this. Kings was about to move out of sack at one point. I think it was Anaheim, Vegas. I mean, yeah, Anaheim, Vegas, and to Seattle. They had three destinations. Y'all know they was closing elementary schools to keep funding, to try to keep the kings in set. So the entertainment was more important than the education, as it shows to this day. That was then. This case involving Calvin Riley down in Florida, Tallahassee, or Tallahassee, Florida, however you want to say it, child. Everybody that drinks, even if it's just one time, everybody who goes to the liquor store, 
that goes to the grocery store, to down to the drugstore, any place that sells alcohol, buys alcohol, puts it in the back seat of your car or in the trunk of your car, and you drive your happy behind from the store back to your house or going from your house to a friend's house or going from your house to the liquor store to a friend's house, and you got some alcohol with you that is closed, y'all, we all need to be praying in the name of whatever God you believe in that Calvin Riley is found not guilty and that the police officer involved that has been accused of taking a closed bottle of alcohol out of the backseat of that man's car, opening and pouring it on the ground and then throwing the open bottle back into his car in order to be able to charge this man with a DUI is found guilty of depriving that man of his civil rights, framing that man the whole nine yards. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Peace, love, and chicken grease. Free Calvin Riley. Free Calvin Riley. Now that's one twisted ass story. This mystery box is coming from a dark place on the internet. Got some latex gloves. I don't really want to touch anything. So this was a $300 mystery box. And the first thing I got is a Samsung. It's a black home screen with one app on it. The first picture looks like some kind of a house. It's pretty freaking creepy. Second thing is definitely a kid's backpack. That is animal hair right here. Down here at the bottom, it says a Barnett. I'm assuming it's a girl. This is like a little boy's outfit in a girl's backpack. There's actually stains all over this thing. It says, I am always with you. Most of the things in this box are just weird, like this teddy bear. I can totally feel something inside of this one. There's little heart box with a thumb drive inside. That's kind of weird and creepy, and honestly, okay, this is a very weird looking box. It smells old, like rotten fruit almost. Comment on this video for part two, or the screams you hear won't just be in your head. Would you try to survive the apocalypse? Is... Is that not what we're doing now? We spotted flying on a broom with a body hanging in El Monte. <gasps> that looks like people on a broom. It's Hotel Transylvania. Well, let's go closer. And it's not a balloon. I'm going to be honest, man. Like, Vampires, witches, uh, fairies. I don't. I don't think I want to come across those, bro. What are those? Uh, mermaids, sirens. I don't want to come across them things, bro. Me personally, I'm straight. I'm straight. It's dope to see on camera, though. But I don't think I want to see that in per in person. I remember y'all remember the the clip we saw with the dude that said he saw like it was like half bird, half lady. Uh, I think he said it was in Mexico. It was a minute ago we saw this clip, but man, that one, I don't like stuff like that. I don't think I really want to come across all that. I don't want to come across all that. <laughs> if they can go to your trunk after you didn't had it packaged up, you know, bottled up, it's not even open. Seal ain't even cracked and they can open it, crack it open and then use that against you. I mean, that's kind of wild. They doing what we always expected them to do. Am I tripping? Am I reaching? I feel like we just seeing stuff of what we always expected them to do. Mystery box. The kids' items. Them kids' items. Them was kids' items. Them wasn't randomly bought and then just sent. Nah, them was used. Them was the kids' items and y'all know something was violated. Something was violated, but for entertainment purposes, which y'all feel is going on collective. I'm not a lawyer, but I watched the final day of trial for the state of Florida versus Calvin Riley. So let me recap how it went. If you haven't watched my other three videos on this case, you have to start there so that you understand what's happening because I'm just going to dive right in. Okay, so the second officer that arrived on the scene that night, Officer Muth, is called to the stand. And the state walks her through her version of what happened. And they also play the video from her body-worn camera. But the audio is really bad from the camera. So I'm going to play some pieces of that. And then I'll play the question and answers that are given in court regarding the footage. <laughs> So we just saw the search of the defendant's vehicle. Can you tell us what was found in the vehicle? There was an open turvet or a turvis that contained an alcoholic beverage located in the cup holder of the center console. And then Officer Oliver found the bottle of vodka. 
Did Officer Oliver ever say anything to you about the bottle of alcohol being opened or closed? No. Did this bottle open or not come into your decision to arrest the defendant for driving under the influence? No. In DUI investigations, if you find an open container that has something that smells like alcohol and then something that is sealed, does that indicate anything to you? Yes. So the open turvis in the center console indicate that they were actively drinking and driving. The bottle of liquor found indicates that once they were done finishing the drink in the center console, maybe they opened the bottle and refill their drink. Based on what the defendant told you, was he confused about who stopped him? Yes, he thought I was Officer Oliver there and I was the one that had stopped him. What does signs of confusion indicate in a DUI suspect? That their wits are not with them. Um, it Drinking affects memory, how you talk to people, how you interact with people. I, I might have got them confused too, I ain't gonna lie. Now I'm going to return back to the video. Officer, it looks like you're about to read something to the defendant. Can you tell us what that is? It's the implied consent. Uh, so when you get a license in Florida, you sign a bunch of paperwork. Implied consent is one of them that if a police officer ever requests that you take a breath test, it's implied that you do. When you asked the defendant initially if he would take a breath test, what did he do? He just started yelling at me. Okay. <laughs> Officer, we just saw a conversation between you and Officer Oliver about the liquor bottle that was found in the vehicle. Did she ever say anything to you about the bottle being opened? No. Could you explain to us your thought process or why you may have made a mistake saying it was open in your report? Uh, yes, I listed it in my report because I didn't want to look like I was hiding anything. And due to the open container of alcohol, the, the turvis that was in the center console, I had just assumed that the vodka was open. You could hear me in my body camera say um, when we were searching the car, when we found, or when Officer Oliver found that bottle, I said, oh, that's probably what was in the cup in the center console. So would you agree that it was just an honest mistake? Yes. Would you consider that bottle of alcohol to be big evidence in your DUI investigation? No. What was the big evidence in your investigation? My observations of the defendant. Are an individual's admissions or confessions to drinking alcohol big in your investigation? Yes. Okay. Um, are a defendant's admissions to being at a bar um, big in your investigation? Yes. Okay, so direct examination wraps up and then the defense gets up to do cross. Cross removed. In Florida, it is not against the law to drink alcohol, then drive. Is that right? If you drink alcohol to the point that you're impaired, it's illegal. Officer Oliver placed Mr. Riley in handcuffs. Yes. You placed him under arrest for driving while license suspended. And DUI. And that's your testimony here today. Yes. 
that you arrested him for at that time when he was placed in handcuffs for driving while license suspended and DUI. Yes. Were you wearing a body worn camera? Yes. And I'm gonna play it one more time to make sure we all heard it. Officer Mitt, now that you've watched your body or Officer Oliver's body worn camera of that interaction, isn't it right that you only told him he was arrested for a driving while license suspended or arrest? She can answer the question. Sure, I said that. I'm not required to list out all of the charges he's under arrest for, and he had just refused the field sobriety exercises, so I thought he would infer that he was also under arrest for DUI in addition to the DWLSR. Infer what he was arrested for? At this point, the judge apparently dismissed the driving with a suspended license charge, but that part wasn't streamed, so I can't show you the clip. So now Calvin Riley is only facing the charge of a DUI. I want to talk to you about the bottle of vodka. And you did use the vodka bottle as evidence. Like how I stated previously, we found it in the vehicle, so I listed it in my report because I didn't want to look like I was hiding anything. But you used it as evidence. The vodka bottle? Yes. No. That's your testimony here today, that you did not use the vodka bottle as evidence. Correct. Your Honor, may I have Richard with your deposition? Question. And in that report, you mentioned that a vodka bottle was found in a pouch on the driver's seat. Is that correct? Answer. Correct. Question. And you mentioned that because it was evidence. Answer. Yes. That's inconsistent with your testimony today. Okay. You're, you asked me about the vodka bottle and... I thought you meant it played into his evidence in his arrest at the point the vodka bottle was found. But you had automatically assumed that that vodka bottle was what was used put in that cup. Yes, which was in my end. The state gets up and does a very brief redirect, and in it, the officer kind of ties up why she says Calvin was arrested that night. Can you tell the jury why you believed you had probable cause to arrest him for DUI at that point? Uh, based on the totality of the circumstances, Officer Oliver had observed poor driving patterns um, and then my own personal observations with the thick, slurred speech, watery, bloodshot eyes. He had said he was leaving a bar and said that he would, had consumed a couple of uh, two beers there. So both sides rest, they give closing arguments, and the jury is sent to deliberate. And a verdict is reached pretty quickly. In the matter of the state of Florida versus Calvin Riley, case number 2023 CT854, we, the jury, find the following as to count one of the information driving under the influence. The defender of Calvin Riley is guilty. So say we all this eighth day of April 2023. And then here's how the judge sentenced him. All right, I'm going to adjudicate you guilty as I did before. Sentence you to six months probation. As a condition of that probation, you'll do 10 days in the Leon County Jail. You'll also have to attend and complete DUI level one school and any counseling as re uh, recommended. 50 hours of community service. Your vehicle, if you own one, will be impounded for a period of 10 days. If you, your driver's license will be suspended for a period of six months, you'll need to attend and complete a victim awareness program. You will have alcohol conditions with random breath test once per month. Now, let me tell you a place I will never live. Times now we've seen some clips like that, and it's just kind of—it's just kind of sad. It's kind of sad. It's kind of scary. It's kind of sad. It just don't make no sense. It's pointless. I mean, they damn near gave him a slap on the wrist. It really wasn't too much of a consequence, but. I mean, damn, he, he, he don't even want to go through that. But it's like, wow, well, my only question, why you have it in the dash, in the console? Don't get him. We damn near got to live perfect in order to not give no excuses and no reasons to be stopped, to be messed with, to be judged, to be discriminated. Like, he, he just raised his voice a high second and she said he yelled at me. You can't, you see, you damn near got to almost be perfect and it ain't fair, but... That's the world we live in, bro. That's the world we live in. But glad he, I'm glad it didn't end the way as we seen on camera. It's ended for other people. But it's still unfair, though. Probably embarrassing, irritating, frustrating, all that, man. But, yeah, that's just crazy that we got some people in 
uh, supposed to be protecting the servant and they really like take advantage or they assume or they like to be like, well, maybe. <laughs> and your ass might be going to the slammer because of a maybe. That's crazy, bro. Basis. Saunas are now a household necessity um, and it is no longer a choice as to whether you want to do them or not. You must do them or you will be sick. We're now over the top and toxic load, hundreds and hundreds of toxins all bioaccumulating in our bodies uh, and getting up to concentrations where they are so screwing up cell function that we're all getting sick from them. The only way we know how to reliably get rid of these oil-soluble toxins is with a sauna. So well, makes sense. In 1951, the U.S. enacted what's called the Invention Secrecy Act. What is it? It allows the government to legally classify and keep certain inventions secret deeming them national and economic security risks. So what could be a threat to national and economic security? Well, if you can figure out a car that goes 300 miles per gallon of gas, that's a threat to them because they make money off of selling you gas. You think uh, something that might affect the soil and make it so that growing gets better, that's a threat to them. They want you to pay more. Uh, inventions under a secrecy order cannot be discussed. They can't be exported. They can't be sold. Violations of them, of uh, the secrecy order, uh, causes imprisonment for the inventor. We have 6,000 different patents right now kept secret by the government. They don't want to allow people to get out there and sell these things. So when you want to ask yourself, where do these inventors go? Well, a lot of them end up walking off a bridge. Now I did some more digging and the claims regarding the Invention Secrecy Act are 100% accurate. The act allows the US government to impose secrecy orders on certain patent applications. The inventions there are deemed to uh, threaten national and economic stability. This means that inventions can't be discussed or sold. The violators face imprisonment. As of recent reports, we see over 6,000 of these under secret orders. The act was originally intended to prevent sensitive information from falling into enemy hands. It has in, uh, extended to become uh, like a coverall for anything that the government doesn't want talked about. A secrecy order must be renewed annually unless the U.S. is at war or declared under a national emergency. You know, we're still at war since the 2000 and, uh, 2001 problem. We're still at war today. We're still undergoing a national emergency. Uh, they say that these can be extended for the duration of the emergency plus additional periods. The exact nature of the patents can't be disclosed. They're technologically uh, advanced. Examples from the declassified ones include advanced military technology and communication systems. Moving forward, we have the USA seeing 47% of all parents providing financial assistant, uh, assistance to their adult children. An average of $1,400 a month, just about enough to cover rent or bills or groceries. This was a report by CBS. <coughs> Guys, the problem is anybody who had marginal stability in the USA, not even talking wealth, just marginal stability, it's being taken away. It's being eroded. This is being done on purpose. You see, if you are a king, let's just take it back to olden times. Maybe you're just a lord over a certain manor. And those, those come to mind because I'm playing a game right now called manor lords. So maybe you're just a lord over a certain manor, right? You, you're just, you oversee a little village. Well, if you see people making more money than you, you're going to lose power eventually. If you see people having more stability than you do as an overseer, you're going to lose power eventually. And so what do you do? You tax them heavier, you sabotage their ability to make money, you uh, make up new laws that make it harder for them. You do all these things that the government is doing today. This is a transfer of wealth outside of your pocketbook into someone else's. It's not going to stop until you are broke, until you are completely destitute, and until you're sick. That is their goal. I got a question, Collective. Do y'all think times is like really getting out of hand right now financially? Or y'all think it was when we had that recession? Let me know. Because when the recession hit, I was still in high school. Like, yeah, I was still in high school. Now, I can really understand what's going on since I'm actually in the real, real world. And I see like family members, my friends struggling. 
it's times where like we yeah it's like it, it, it's different now like but maybe because i'm able to experience it but let me know do y'all remember that time and which one was worse i got a question now y'all seen the movie passion of christ right if you have do y'all remember the people who was trying to take jesus people who was after him the whole movie based off what he believed the knowledge he was giving who he was who he believed he was and they didn't believe do y'all think them is the same people that's at the top still to this day trying to stop inventions trying to stop people's mindsets from growing trying to keep people in the same path the same thing every day trying to really take everything from them keep them keep them away from the the true knowledge the true wisdom is am i am i reaching too far with that and this is do y'all think them as the same people i'm asking i'm asking because it, it, it i always wanted to ask that but i never asked that publicly i never told nobody that maybe my sister but other than that, I never asked nobody, but now it's time to really bring them type of questions to the forefront. So I'm asking, can y'all answer that for me, please? Like, bro, once you really sit down and think about it, everything in this mother is designed for my to fail. Like, I'm sitting here waiting to get my truck loaded so I can start my day, you know, for the company that barely pays me enough to, you know, keep my life together slightly. And I can't just abruptly leave this mother because where else am I going to get the money from? Like, I, I truly believe that I'm talented enough to, you know, make something happen and make something shake in, like, maybe six months to a year from now. However, where is that initial funding going to come from? You see what I'm saying? Food is bad for you. It's highly chemicalized, highly addictive, highly sugarized, and highly everything bad for you arise. And if you look up any health article, it tells you that you can't eat any of the shit that you eat on a daily basis. But nine times out of ten, that's either all you can afford or that's all that's available. Hospital bills is a fucking scam. Insurance is a fucking scam. Rent is a scam. Mortgages are scams. Just living in general is a fucking scam. The majority of ways to make enough money really fast are very unethical and highly illegal. Yet the people who call it illegal are the ones who do it the most. That's the craziest part. You gotta hope your car doesn't break down because if it does a mechanic's gonna hold the shit for months because he or she is backed up forever and it's like okay you got my car how the f am i supposed to get to and from they tell you to save and invest and all this shit but it's like you taking that investment is a risk now you can't win life without taking a risk however if the shit don't work out you're f***ed. a lot of people stay up late as a bitch knowing they got to be to work tomorrow early as hell in the morning only because their job took away the majority of their day and the only way for them to feel some type of control over their life is to stay up past the point in which they know they need to go to sleep to get a, a productive day the next day i can't remember exactly what that phrase is called but it, it's a real thing and then on top of that same subject most people who do that they stay up late because they don't want to go to work the next day <laughs> shit, this shit is a scam bro and after all of this bullshit after all of this bullshit you still got to get up and produce something whether you man or woman you still have to get up and produce something because if you do nothing you're pretty much just going to be on the street and it's like knowing all that shit bro sometimes sometimes that shit gets to you man sometimes it gets to you but i can tell you this even though all of this bullshit is a real thing and yeah it does get to me too i refuse to let this shit bring me down i refuse i refuse because i know deep inside my head and it's more so on the forefront now it used to be deep but now it's like right up in here i know for a fact that one of these days none of the shit is going to matter because i'm going to be in such a great position in my life that i'm gonna be able to look back and be like damn i went through all this bullshit and struggle that the world just threw at me and i came out on top that may sound cartoonish that may sound far-fetched that may sound all kind of whatever you can think of however that's the only thing that keeps me that's the only, that is the only driving force in my life right now. It's not to be the best, it's not to be the greatest, it's not to be this, that. It is to get to the top of the mountain through my own efforts and then show people that it's possible, right? That's the only thing that's keeping me going right now. You gotta find something to keep you going in this crazy ass world we live in, bro. You gotta find something. And you know what? 
he gonna make it happen. And the reason why I say that is because when that that part where he talk about staying up late, cause you don't want to go to work the next day, and your job and took up all your time, and all you got is these little bit of hours to stay up late, feel like you got control over yourself. Yo, that was me. Now I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. I thought that was just me. I thought I just did that. But I guess not. So if you relate to that message, you feel like, you know, you if you know and you feel that you're talented enough to do something other than work for a company who really don't care about you, trust me. Everybody got a talent. Everybody got one talent and something that they great at. Figure it out. Find it. Tap into it. Make it look dope when you're doing it. But you always do gotta be doing something I can relate to dude. So I appreciate everything he's saying. And now I'm saying to y'all, cause I was one of them people who he, where he's at. And now I'm at a whole nother level. So I am speaking it to y'all. Like it is possible, man. I am an example. It is possible. I got I got a friend who and he making music right now, blowing up, bro. Like, I got some pe I got some homies literally that I'm starting to see like they figuring it out. It's help. They're they're they making it work. But so it, it is possible. It is possible. I've heard the story. I'm experiencing it. I'm seeing it like with my own two eyes from other people. It's possible. So I'm telling y'all collective, it's possible. Alright? It's possible. Find your find your talent. Find what find what you're good at. Tap into it. And don't stop, man. Keep your foot on that gas pedal. Y'all got this. This is the flag of the United States of America. You're going to see it flying big time today because, you know, it's 4th of July. And as we were brought up, we were taught that the parts of the flag had different meanings. Like the 13 stripes represent the 13 original colonies and the 50 stars. But what if that's not what they stand for at all? What if the 13 stripes represent the 13 bloodlines, the 13 families? The Astors, the Bundys, Reynolds, Freeman, Russell, Onassis, Kennedy, Collins, DuPont, Lee, Rockefeller, Rothschild, and Van Dunn. And these 13 families have us, the people, cornered. We are lost at sea in maritime law. Also, this flag that we fly everywhere, that we see everywhere, is considered the wartime flag. This flag right here is the peacetime flag. Big difference. Not just on appearance, but on meaning. Have a great Independence Day, everybody. Did she just take y'all brain for one, too? I know damn well. World War II hit these wounds to heal and emaciated patients. The principle was put something on the body that's highly conductive. Now, if I took all the materials that were highly conductive in the world, the one material that would be most beneficial for healing would be silver. Silver is not cytotoxic, period. And the doses that we're giving it in, we're giving it in a nanogram level dose. But silver works on a nanogram dose level. So There's a huge disparity between the two. That's what allowed me to get it through the FDA. It took me two years. This is a picture of the fabric. We're only dealing, we're only dealing with between 0.5 and 1 micron thick coating of silver, pure metallic silver, that's around every fiber. So if I took one square inch from, let's say, your shirt, and, and I plated that material, I would probably end up with 25 square inches of pure pellated metallic silver, because the entire fiber is plated. That's one of the magics of how this thing works. We don't put any electricity into the body. This is all passive. We're dependent upon the body's own natural ability to create an electromagnetic pulse on the surface. That is, it creates a negative electromagnetic potential, which in most cases runs between minus 50 and minus 70 millivolts. I'll show you a case where we were able to regenerate a fingertip in some other cases by creating the electrical potential. That is, put something that's highly conductive on the surface of the body. Now, why can't you take a piece of copper or a piece of pure gold, or, or a piece of metallic silver, like silver foil. The problem is, I don't have a surface area. This is a surface area dependent phenomenon.
Up close look at the destruction in Rancho Palos Verdes caused by unprecedented land movement. Recent reports suggest the ground is moving about a foot per week. Fox 11's Matthew Seedorf is live tonight after navigating through some of the most treacherous areas of that neighborhood. Matthew? Christine, really unbelievable to see just how much this land has moved. Now, this road used to be up where our camera is now. I estimate probably 12 feet higher than where we are currently, and it's only getting worse out here. Fox 11 walking exclusively with experts viewing record-breaking land movement in Rancho Palos Verdes. As you can see, their elevation was about six feet higher. This neighborhood off Portuguese Bend, ground zero. The gas line breaks about three times a week. Gas, a frequent smell, homes and roads here cracking and sinking more every day. You have to think to yourself, this isn't real. And that's how I feel here. I, I feel like I'm on a movie set, but in reality, this is 25 people's homes. Drone video from the Alpha Structural team shows a giant separation of land cutting through the neighborhood. This whole part, it just pulled away from over here and opened up a, a chasm. They have abandoned the underground water mains. Water main pipes now above ground to prolong breaks. There's the garden hose that goes up to their house to give them water. A garden hose used to get water into a home, it would be challenging to walk upright. Absolutely. The ground already splitting? Let's just hope that ain't the San Andreas. I mean, what else could it possibly be, though? It's in California. Ground separating like that per week? That's crazy, though. That's crazy. But then, like I said, the people who built underground, do y'all think that they really going to be able to keep whatever they have underground if the ground is splitting and moving? What is it doing underground, too, though? Like, that's what just don't make no sense to me. They building bunkers, but, like, well, may, maybe, maybe, I can't say that, because maybe they building bunkers in the, in the parts of underground that we know for sure isn't going to, maybe they building bunkers in the areas and locations that they know the splits and breaks ain't going to happen. Maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know, because we still have hollow earth, but y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. That's just kind of scary that it's happening like per week. I'm in Cali. <laughs> so I'm double. I'm I'm screwed either way you put it. <laughs> but I know we made it to the end of this. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop them uploads. I know we coming with about four videos a week, man. And this is for entertainment purposes as well. When you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, helps collective grow, helps collective get bigger, helps more people who like this type of content, tap in with this content. But I ain't gonna hold you collective. I hope y'all having a smooth seven. Again, I wanted to relay the message to y'all. Y'all don't have to stress out, man. Vibrate higher than that. I know it's easier said than done, but I've been through it too. So I know what y'all feeling. I know how times is. If it's rough right now, mentally, financially, whatever it is, y'all got this. Y'all build for it. God got you. He ain't gonna put you through nothing you can't handle. You a soldier, you got it, trust me. I hope you're having a smooth seven. I love y'all collected. And until I see y'all in the next one, y'all know what it is. We gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just check my count, check, sheesh, at the amount. You probably know